okay hi everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking about the history of st mary jamaica while i show you snippets of the town now in the background you're gonna be hearing a lot of birds because for some reason uh, this morning the birds them seem very vocal i don't know if them cursing or them having fun or what but my mic open eyes in the background so i hope you don't mind that Now to the east of St. Anne and north of St. Catherine and St. Andrew, we have St. Mary. It is a very mountainous parish and its capital is Port Maria. The parish was formed by merging the former parishes of Medcalf and parts of St. George. It is home to Rio Nuevo, the town where England and Spain fought their last battle for control of the islands. After the English took control, Puerto Santa Maria was renamed St. Mary, which is apparently an English translation. No, so that's the location of St. Mary. So now we're moving on to the history. Now, the history of St. Mary can be traced back to the early 17th century when the Spanish first settled in Jamaica. In 1760, Jamaican history witnessed a major uprising that began in the vicinity of Port Maria and soon engulfed nearly the entire island. At the helm of this revolt was... Do you remember the name of this name? Taki, a Coromanti slave from Frontier Estate. Grace Charity, formerly known as Fort Haldane, was taken over and ammunition seized. The rebels marched on, leaving behind a trail of fatalities among the white population. <music> Now, St. Mary is home to many architectural beauties, one such building being the Anata Bay Baptist Church, and we will see that church shortly. It was built in 1824 and is still standing strong today. This church was demolished by sympathizers of the Colonial Church Union during the Sam Sharp Uprising for Freedom, otherwise known as the Christmas Rebellion of 1831. Nonetheless, it was eventually reconstructed in 1835 because William Nib and Thomas Buxton, who are celebrated abolitionists, collected funds in order to reconstruct the church. Now, it is situated on the side of the principal road from Anata Bay to Port Antonio. Following emancipation, free villages were set up in the parish, though the region for the most part kept its large estates intact. By the start of the 19th century, it was home to 63 sugar factories, a number that dwindled to just three by the time the century drew to a close. Now, in the 1930s, St. Mary was instrumental in forming the Jamaica Producers Association, an organization designed to protect banana farmers from the monopolistic practices of the United Fruit Company and other organizations. As a result, Jamaican banana growers could now come together as one and see their produce to its final destination. Now, this collective effort brought about a newfound independence for local farmers and truly ushered in a new era for St. Mary. Main towns in St. Mary are Port Maria, which as you know is the capital of the parish, 
and then we have Oraka Bessa and this one is located to the west of Port Maria and then we have Anatabi. Now other important towns in St. Mary are Highgate and Richmond. And let's discuss some outstanding Jamaicans from the parish. Of course, we have Ian Fleming, who the Ian Fleming International Airport is named after. And that airport is found in the parish. And as you know, Ian Fleming is the author of the James Bond series of spy novels, which were turned into a movie. And then we have Dr. Erna Broadbaugh, CD. Uh, this person is a sociologist and a social activist. She's also a novelist. Then we have Oliver Samuels, OD, which I think many Jamaicans know. He's a comedian in Jamaica. He was also born in St. Mary. And I don't know if you remember the television series that he acted in called Oliver at Large. Very funny. Supposed to be able to find some videos of that on YouTube. And then we have the Honorable Lisa Hanna, MP. Thank you.